Good morning, Tuesday morning. I know I say this a lot, but today is going to be utterly insane. Heading now to Sirona to sit with a guy named Ron Ben Chaim, who has a very interesting story, to say the least. Pumped to meet him, and then I'm heading to TD Bank to do my second interview with the team, fascinated by what they're doing in Israel, followed by a meeting with Citri Barak, an amazing company I'm advising, the latest company I've joined, doing drones and AI for farmers, so it doesn't get, get much more interesting than that. And then lunch with Zach Abramowitz at Meat Kitchen, followed by a meeting with Elon Zivotovsky, an amazing VC here in Israel, and then a podcast this evening. So pretty much one of the most insane days ever. Pumped about it. Let's do this. going to be a remarkable day. You know how I know? Because I just got to Serona, which is right there, and I got parking right here. That does not happen. Literally, the first parking, second, second parking spot on the street, walking distance from Serona. Guy just pulled right out. Wow. Modern day miracles. Look at that parking. Look at that parking. Nothing better than looking for parking and a guy pulls right out of the ideal parking spot. I don't know. Again, little things that make me happy. day this perfect in Tel Aviv. The skies are quite perfect. Beautiful weather, not too hot, not cold, not a cloud in the sky. It's a good day. What have I told you about walking the streets of Tel Aviv? You walk the streets and you bump into people like they're just normal people strolling the streets. Didi Medina, the one, the only, the man in the hair, the man in the... Can you take off your hat, please? Come on, dude. The man in the hair, the man in the beard. Look at this guy. What's up, guys? And what time is it right now? It is... 8.30 a.m. Look how good looking he is. What's going on, man? I woke up You're like, like a regular on the vlog now. A regular, right? This is like every day. Love it, man. I'm so happy I got about to bump into you, dude. You give me good, uh, you boost me with my energy. I need it in the morning. You and coffee, dude. Me and coffee. <laughs> 8.30 in the morning, he's in from Jerusalem. You just got that's crazy, dude. Yeah. What time you wake up? 4.30. Nice, we should hang out at 4.30. That's when I wake up. That's when you wake up? It is when I wake Let's up. Let's get coffee. Good <laughs> <laughs> cool to see you, man. Thanks. to meet the TD Bank team right now. A bit early, last time I got there I was dripping sweat because it's a walk from Serona, so I'm here a couple minutes early to cool off for the interview. Pumped to meet the team again. Sitting with this dashingly handsome guy. Who are you? First of all, how are you? I'm uh, very good, As thank you. All right, what's your name? My name is Neil Gibb. Neil Gibb. You're like a regular on this vlog, man. You've been on this so many times already. Three <laughs> times? Yeah. You're the first time also, you weren't? On the first time, I wasn't uh, okay. on record. I right. was in the room, but right. I was not... You were behind the camera. Exactly. Beautiful. All right, so what do you do here? What's your title in TD Innovation Center? I'm the Innovation Manager. So you manage all the magic. Team. Yeah. Love it. Real quick, two seconds, your background, remind me. Before this role, I worked for Citibank. For three years. Oh, in Israel? Yes. So like the, the city accelerator? No, the innovation center. Innovation the security center. innovation center. Got it. And before that uh, I had uh, I had a startup. Okay. Can and I ask you how old you are? Yeah, I'm thirty three. Thirty three. Yeah. Man, I, uh, when I sit with people this like talented and like this young that have accomplished so much and just wait to see who we're about to meet, I feel so inadequate. I'm 40 years old. What have I done? You're like, it's unbelievable. But, but that, but 33 compared to who we're about to meet is even is old, right? Because <laughs> tell me about you are going to meet two people. Yeah. One of them, I think, is a bit older than me. Okay. And one, and one like of them is, or something, 23. is way younger. Right. And Okay, so let's start with the very, older very one. Talented. Yeah, I heard. I heard like he's like a myth. Both both of them are very talented. Then you know they do different things, but both of them are really talented. I'll talk to you about the older guy first. Who, who are we meeting? Uh, Michael Avni. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm not sure we'd be very happy that we refer him as the older guy. Okay, the older than the younger. Okay. Actually, he's is way younger in spirit than uh, okay. his age, right? He's what does he do here? Like gazillion hobbies and nice. 
you you you'll talk to him. I, I'm guessing you'll see it immediately. Awesome. What's his role? He's the lab manager. Lab manager. Beautiful. So what does that mean in normal English? What does that mean? He's a lab manager. What does he do? Everything that we do here yeah. goes first through him. Mm -hmm. When whenever we decide to test a technology, yep. we put it in the lab first. Love it. Michael is responsible for talking with any vendor that we meet. Love it. And install, deploy, and do all the technical uh, magic uh, before we can actually start do the testing. Right. He's also doing some testing himself, and he's also leading and orchestrating some of the projects that we are having. He actually lead led a very interesting project in the past few weeks where we sent him to Amsterdam to run it. In cool. one of our you, gotta, you gotta talk about that? Uh, we cannot tell too, too many details, details right. but okay. uh, I think it relates to what Julie uh, talked about on the previous... Uh, on the previous cool. Uh, okay, so this is a trend, right? Every enterprise now that wants to increase its, increase its corporate innovation has this lab, right? Where they basically run POCs, they, you know, test out technologies, and, you know, and then they deploy in production. So that's what you guys have here, and he's a lab manager. Okay, the second guy? The second guy is Rui Paz. Yeah. He's uh, the hacker type, you can say. An enigma, a prodigy. He's a prodigy. He's 20, 23? Uh, 22. 22, and he's had an exit already? Yes. And now he's... He, I think, finished high school around the age of 14 or 15, uh, then went to university and decided to pursue his career in cyber. So he did some uh, cyber courses, walked the checkpoint nice. uh, after a few years. Uh, did his own thing. I'm sure he will tell you more about it. I did an exit and then uh, came to us. Love it. There are going to be things that I know because I've heard behind the scenes from several people about this guy. He's not going to be able to talk about it on camera, but my understanding is this guy is a world-class hacker. Definitely. Like, Definitely. Meeting, literally. Yeah, one, one of the best that I ever met. Unbelievable. All right, let's go meet the guys. Yeah, let's do it. Too. So let's start with the dashingly handsome hacker, Roy. Let's start. Let's, let's go sit down, my friend. Come here. Mm -hmm. Wait, so you're, we said 22. 22. Yeah. All right, yeah. let's, let's sit down. Let's talk. I gotta hear about your story, man. Have a seat in my, come into my office right here. Yeah. Okay, so I often, very often talk, and I, I said this to someone in a meeting this morning. He said, listen, let me tell you why I wanted to meet you. And I said, I don't care why you wanted to meet you. You know why? Because I like, my strategy, my business strategy in life is to be the dumbest person around the table. I want to be the dumbest person in a room. But then there's meetings that I'm the dumbest person by a very large margin. Yeah. That's this meeting. Mm -hmm. Okay, you're 22 years old. I'm double your age. Yeah. This is embarrassing, man. What you've done in your life, nothing. what I've done, yeah, nothing. Right. Okay, let's start from the beginning. Your name? <laughs> Roy. Roy. Where you, give me your background, for personal background. Where are you from? What's your story? How long have you been in Israel? Give me, give me some information. Well, I was born and raised in Israel. Oh, really? I live in a very um, cool and very um, warm suburb called Kadima. It's really small, not that big, uh, rather um, around the low scale of things. So I live in the pretty... Kadima? Kadima. Where is it? Where is it? It's near Natalia. Cool. You'd think by now, after 25 years in Israel, I know this country, but... Yeah. Anyway, okay, go on. So you live in Kadima, cool. Yeah. And um, you grew up here, you said? Yeah. Your family's from where originally? Um, also Israel. They also uh, lived in, uh, I think, for suburb regions. So you're originally Israeli? Yeah. Originally Israeli. I thought you were somewhere else. I don't know why I thought you were somewhere else. Okay, cool. Just so. made that my practice in my English works. Okay, cool. Thank you very much. No, of course. <laughs> my, you can, you can uh, mail me the check. Of course. Okay, so <laughs> you finished high school at what age? Uh, essentially, I finished high school at like the age of uh, 13 or 12. That depends on how you look at things. 13 years old? Yeah. What? I started to grow more and more bored out of school. It even started to be the worst kid in class. I threw paper planes, threw stuff. It was so boring. Okay, let me ask you a question. Did you ever get your IQ test? Yeah. You did? I did. You, you know your IQ right now? Uh, yes and no. What does that mean? Y yes, I got my IQ test. No, it's not definitive because I'm on the higher scale of the spectrum. So after 160, they can't evaluate you any further. So I feel like I feel like I should just, like I, need I say more? This, I mean, okay, so you're off the scale, basically, yeah. literally off the scale. Yeah. Because there's actually like a, there's a is an expression off the charts. You're yeah. literally off the charts. But my family were had this really that surprised expression after I got the test because my sister all also got the same result. So they were like, well, sure, you're like the second place here. You're not the first. Very nice. What do your parents do? What's their background? Uh, my father's background is the military man. He served in the military for a great uh, many years. He also got an award for his uh, military service. Cool. He has a special, uh, how can I say it in English? I don't remember. Say it in Hebrew. 
מלגת מחקר. So he was on scholarship. Yeah, no scholarship for for research. Research scholarship. Yeah, in the army. Yeah, beautiful. He research and defense solutions and how to protect Israel from both cyber fronts and other sorts of the classified stuff. Because your dad's hardcore. Yeah. What does your mom do? My mom is a teacher, a lecturer at the Open University and other university, and she lectures in economics. Beautiful. Okay, so you get it from your parents. Get it. How many siblings are you? Um, only two. Two. So you and your sister are both geniuses. Okay, great, fantastic. All right. So at the age of 13, 14, you finished high school, then what? What did you do next? Um, 12, 13. 12, 13, what did you do next? Um, I studied the university. And studied? Computer science. Of course. No, no simple course, like of there's course. no other alternatives. Of course, I, by the way, I, I, not that I have the mind for it, but I kind of regret not studying computer science. That's a topic for another time. Okay, so then you finish that. You, you have a BA? Um, no, because this is another issue. As I told you, I was bored at school. Apparently, I was also bored at the university. Okay. I felt like it was a grind because just doing the test and everything right. was so boring, so dull, Not so mentally mundane. challenging for you. Exactly. Okay, and then, so you didn't finish your degree? No. So you have I, no degree? No, I only have my second uh, year, and afterwards I just said, oh, maybe I should get a job. Why so, not get so, a job? So basically, everything that we've said till now in, in one sentence is, you are Israel's Mark Zuckerberg. Yeah. That's the bottom line. Okay, I get it. Fine, great. I also went and dropped out of Harvard, so... <laughs> it's did, you, did you really? Yeah, because my sister told me, well, just go to Harvard, it will be great there. Dude, I went to Harvard, it wasn't that great there. <laughs> <laughs> okay, fantastic, fine, beautiful. And then you started your first company at what age? Uh, 19. 18. Yeah. What was the company, what did it do? Essentially, uh, when I worked in, in Checkpoint, I was also some sort of the Astrotech um, team where our goal was to be security researcher, increase the company's reputation, increase uh, checkpoint uh, knowledge over the competitors, and actually find really crucial vulnerabilities in our competitors, and actually show how to exploit it in, um, you know, like to embarrass our competitors. Well, you suck. It. Your so security is bad. You are bad. Let me just understand what you're saying. You were paid to hack. Exactly. Unbelievable. Okay, so you, so you the checkpoint, and then you had your own startup, and then you sold it. Yeah. It was an exit? Was it, like, it, was, it wasn't exactly the exit as people expect of what an exit would be because it was a little bit more focused on the business end of things right. as we specialize in cryptocurrency mining, oh. how to specialize mining farm, how to increase your passive revenue from every GPU. Wow. So I decided that instead of just going into one company and sell it only to one, I just targeted a lot of um, farms and I don't know, a companies that actually dealt with cryptocurrencies and sold it to them uh, like a scrap by scrap until I actually sold my entire stock. Very interesting. Okay, then you joined TD. Yeah. Why? Why I joined TD? Because I don't know. I have this really great urge to continue to strive forward. I really want to succeed. I really want to be better myself. So after I resolved the, everything, it was like at home. I didn't even have a reason to wake up. Like, I just couldn't better. That sounds really sad, man. <laughs> it made me sad. <laughs> it is sad. Like, no, from a I, professional perspective, you mean. From a okay. professional, yeah, I yeah. had money. I had everything. Right, but right, right. something, I had nothing to do. Right. I got bored. bored. Yeah. Okay. And TD Bank reached out. Um, yeah, TD Bank reached out, and I thought, well, Innovation Center is a really great opportunity. And I thought it could be really, um, really, really interesting for me to actually see how it goes and how it moves forward. Interesting. Okay, and, and by the way, sorry to interrupt you, but I just want to say one thing. I just told Julie and the team, like, TD Bank is very unique in that it's the only bank that I know of it's, and that I could think of that people genuinely, thoroughly love the brand. Exactly. People love TD Bank. Yeah. Okay, so you come here and your job, what's your title here? Well, I don't know how to say the acronym because it's embarrassing, but it's Innovation Security and Innovation Specialist. Innovation Information Security, security and Innovation Specialist. But the acronym just, is that. Got it, okay. I was like, alright. thought it would be worse than that, but... No, it's not. Could, it couldn't be worse. Couldn't you get a Chief Hacker or something? That would be a cool business card, Chief Hacker. Well, let me just uh, speak to Mir and Julie and see if we can get it away. Okay, fine. Let's, let's, talk, let's talk business here, because I'll tell you something. Before I met you, like, I heard stories from people that know you that you were able to like literally hack, like the craziest hacking stories. Mm -hmm. Tell me, I mean, because we're working, obviously, TD Bank is a, you know, a global bank, there's things we can't talk about, but what is your day like? What do you do? Talk to me, like whatever you can say on camera, obviously. Well, my role as TD Bank is to look at startups that have products and every other sort of, uh, let's say, countermeasure to actually stop or thwart hackers movement or advancement within the network, right? So they have this really um, great um, booklet of information how they can stop hackers, how they can stop advanced persistent threat, nation state attack and, and whatnot. So my goal is to take all of those branding and all of those, let's say, offerings and actually put it on our very own lab 
and see how it can actually stop attackers in a, let's say, real simulation or a real attack environment. Uh -huh. So you're evaluating the core technology of exactly. these vendors. So that's really interesting because, like, without getting too technical, I know this from other companies that I work with, you know, every vendor wants to integrate with, you know, TD Bank. Every, exactly. every startup is like dreams to work with TD Bank, but TD Bank says, listen, whoa, slow down. Exactly. What is your core technology? Does this integrate with our existing systems? Does this bring value to our existing systems? So you, they come into your offices, theoretically, you, you know, they obviously, again, the, the team evaluates it, but then it comes to you and you look at this technology from a security perspective. Is this going to secure, make us more secure or alternatively, will this increase our vulnerability mm -hmm. and you bring it, I mean, as, as, as tests go, you're, you're the end game. Like you're, you know how to really. Yeah, exactly. Um, because security devices, people don't know that they have both two sides. On the one hand, they can actually make your organization more secure, more organized, can actually increase the inherent security within the organization. But on the other face of the coin, they're yet another product. Right. They yet another web server. They have an yet another, uh, another operation system. Exactly. Another they have another loose end. Love it. Amazing, dude. It's fascinating. Let's have a cup of coffee. I want to hear more because I love this stuff. And uh, yeah, if I can do anything to help you, do let me know. Of course. Thanks, dude. I never said no to coffee. Done. That's my motto. Done. I've said it before and I'll say it again. I started this vlog for one reason and one reason only, to give the world, you, a window into the people behind all the magic happening in the Israeli tech ecosystem. I try to give you access, exposure to these people on a daily basis, but today is a whole different level. I mean, literally, I think he's probably one of the most intelligent people I've ever sat with. I'm not sure if that came off on video, but incredible, incredible stuff. And now we're gonna meet someone else from the TV team. And uh, yeah, I'm just blown away and always happy to hear about world leading enterprises building innovation centers in this tiny little country because they realize this is where all the magic happens. All right, now to meet the rest of the team. Why is everyone so good looking in TD Bank? <laughs> Next thing, what's your name? Hi, I'm Michael. Michael, we're gonna sit down and talk, but you know, I, I, said, to, I said to the rest of the team, like, I like being the dumb one in the room, so I'm looking forward to sitting with you and being again the dumb one in the room, let's sit. <laughs> So my worst nightmare just happened. I just want to point out, you know, on the camera, there's all kinds of different settings. I do slow-mo, I do time lapses, and sometimes I forget to put it on the right setting, and you end up taking, in this case, it was a quick one minute. Sometimes I literally have done an entire interview with an executive at Microsoft, and it was on the wrong setting. There was no audio. It's my worst nightmare. Okay, so let's, let's, let's start again here. Your name, Michael, last name, Avni. Michael Avni, yeah. And you grew up in Ramon. Yeah. Live in Ramon. True. Super hardcore geek. From the early days, today, I often say, today, geek is the new cool. Everyone wants to be a geek today. Back then, geek was just geek. Yeah, geek was an outsider. So I, I was, I would like, I like to say I was also a geek, but not as hardcore as you. Like I wasn't, I wasn't ripping things I'm apart. I'm not comparing geekness. <laughs> we can both be geeky. Yeah. Okay, so enough right. geekness for all of us. There you go. It's enough to go around. Okay, beautiful. <laughs> yeah. So professionally, talk to me. What, what'd, you, what'd you study? Where'd you study? What'd you do? Yeah. So. Basically, I, as you said, I'm a geek from the early days of computing. I, I used to tear apart my uh, 486 and XT computers, and I kept doing that ever since. I love IT, I love the, 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 the hardware, I love the software, I love everything about this. Uh, everything I knew, I learned on my own. Uh, I, do, uh, I sit at night and I study, I do all these courses, and uh, I play around with things, and that's how I learn. Okay. I went always went down the IT path and uh, and uh, security and uh, hacking and all this uh, okay. all this stuff right and um, well how far how what, far what, along should you, I go back where did you study uh, you, I did everything on my own you, do you guys have a prerequisite to hire a TD that can't have a degree no one's allowed to have a degree around here no, these guys uh, went to the university no, yeah. no, 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 no one has degrees around here oh he's a Harvard dropout can, can I just I have two. Oh, you have two degrees can I just say one thing I just want to point out one he thing he has enough for all of us my uncle is a very very successful businessman and I once asked him what degrees do you have? You know what he said to me? This is the best one-liner ever. I said, what degrees do you have? You know what he said? He said, you know what has a lot of degrees? A thermometer. You know where you stick that? <laughs> That's okay. good. Greatest answer ever. <laughs> greatest answer ever. Okay, so you don't have a degree. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> the greatest answer. You might have to edit that out. I don't know. I'm not sure. I'll have to get approval for that joke, but it's a great joke. Okay, so you don't have a degree, but you... Okay, so where did you start your career? Actually, when I grew up, it kind of... Uh, I kind of grew into this uh, right. position because it started uh, when my family started asking me these all these que technical questions. Can right. you fix this? Can you right. fix that? Help me with this. Help me with that. We all have and that. Then, yeah, then the forum expanded and it started 
happening from friends and from friends of friends. And then I said, hey, why not make some money out of it? Okay. And I started uh, looking for uh, these kind of jobs. It was when I was 14, 15. I started volunteering in Amazing. this. Uh... Sounds very familiar, by the way, because <laughs> not in the IT world, but I always loved tech and startups. And I did it because I loved it. Yeah, I became... it's a passion. It's yeah. a passion. 100%. It's what uh, lights the, the spark in my 100%. eyes. So, and, and by the way, I'm sure this is true for you, too. If today, you know, I was doing what I do, what I do today professionally and I wasn't making money, I'd still do it. Yeah, yeah, it's a passion, right? Exactly. That's okay. how I learned everything I know from passion because so I love it. What type of? What's your specialty? In other words, I know IT and whatever, but like, is there? Is it you know? Let's say, is it computers? Is it servers? Is it mobile? What's your like bread and butter? Is it everything? <laughs> it's everything. I make things happen. <laughs> I love you it. Give me a job. You give me a task, and I'll, I'll make it happen. Can you come over and speed up my computer? I'm just kidding. <laughs> okay, fine. So beautiful. So before TD Bank, where were you? I was in HSBC oh, cool. uh, doing the, the same role. I ran the cyber lab there. They poached you. Yeah, they did. Okay, because you're good looks. Okay, fine, great. <laughs> so, how, so how long have you been here? I mean, I've already been here for about four or five months. Four or five months. Yeah. And what's your five day months. like? Walk me through your day. You get to the office, what do you, what's your... It depends, but what I do varies from both uh, technical stuff, running the lab, uh, implementing uh, security products, uh, actually testing them, uh, trying to break them, or it could be um, uh, research, uh, market research, uh, company research. Wow. Um, so it's it, like really vast. It, it's really vast, really wide. Really that's why I love my job because it's it's never boring. I would I would imagine. So yeah. you know, what did I think Mark Zuckerberg is is on record for saying? something like we break things or something along those lines. What's his famous line? Something about breaking things. I feel like that's very much the philosophy here is bring us solutions. Let's see if we can, if they if with, withstand our tests. Exactly. Because we have the most talented people here. And let's see if, we, if they withstand our tests, your tests and the rest of the team tests, then it's something that, that TD wants to integrate. And so that's your part of that process of evaluating and looking at technologies and saying, all right, how does this work in our ecosystem, our exactly. universe? Love it. So walk me through the process here, like the flow. Okay, I'm, let's say I'm a startup. Let's say I come to you and I say, I have a blockchain startup. No. Let, let, let's, let's say realistic, okay? <laughs> let's talk about, <laughs> let's say. Uh, okay, yeah, so I, I, have a, okay, I, have an, I have a security startup. Yeah. Okay, I have a cybersecurity startup. I come to you and I say, TD, I can make your servers significantly more secure. I can basically prevent hacks to zero. It will never, you know, we'll never be able to be hacked. I come to you and I say, all right, here's my solution. What do you do next? Well, what we do, uh, we take the solution, first we implement it in the lab, and we see, it, it, it depends which kind of solution it is, because there are so many kinds of solutions, so many, there's so many kinds of vectors you need to, to, uh, to solve in order to be more secure, because right. you can do so many things that will make you more secure. It all depends which vector you're addressing. So, if there is a solution that is, um, for example, solution that um, a product that that gives a, a, provides a solution to lateral movement, for example, and you want to see if a hacker once a endpoint has been compromised, and you want to see if the hacker can get from that compromised endpoint to the crown jewels, yeah. to the to the important I love servers. This stuff, man. I don't know. I love this stuff. I'm so not a security guy, but I freaking this is like I'm telling you, I'm, I think I'm in a candy store. Anyway, go on. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly the feeling here. I love it. Yeah, go on. So uh, basically, if the solution is, is, uh, if this product uh, provides solution to lateral movement, what we'll do is we'll, we'll set up an environment that, um, that simulates a real production environment and allow uh, our hackers to try and do this lateral movement to see if they get caught or if they find this, uh, this uh, technology uh, um, in the organization. So that's one example. There are all kinds of solutions. Some will listen to all the traffic in the in the network and then let you analyze it and run a lot of queries on it and all these kinds of things. So it, every solution needs its own um, uh, environment, right. its own... Um, yes, I mean, it's, it, yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm with you. Let me ask you the most important question. Yeah. Having a good time? Ah, I'm having a blast. It seems, it seems that way. Yeah, you see the, the spark, spark in my eye? Yeah, yeah. yeah. once this good. dies, I'm out of here. TD Bank, TD Bank <laughs> is a good organization to work it is, with. It is. Listen, I mean, I, I, I've met the team now a couple of times. Like, It seems like everyone here is like remarkable people. Like, Do you have anybody like not extraordinary on your team? Oh, oh that's for you to decide. <laughs> I, I've pretty much made my decision. Anyway, dude, fantastic to meet you. If I can do anything to help you in any way, help you win, I'd, I'd be glad to do that. We could always have a cup of coffee. But uh, keep doing what you're doing, man. I love it. Thank you very much. Thanks, dude. That was some seriously, seriously fascinating stuff. And I have another video with the team in a couple of weeks. Love those guys. Made it home. Quite an incredible day. Tonight is Memorial Day where we commemorate all the lost uh, soldiers and 
heroes who gave their life over the years to terror, to wars and other things in the state of Israel. The next day is Independence Day and that transition between Memorial Day to Independence Day in Israel is always very complicated. This year, it's a little more personal. My brother is one of the lives we're, we're commemorating, so it's going to be a very emotional two days. Be back in a couple of days. See you then.